All right, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of 19 minus 2 to the power of 18. So for my solution, first start with 2 to the power of 19 minus 2 to the power of 18. Now, 2 to the power of 19, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 18 plus 1. So now I have 2 to the power of 18 plus 1 minus 2 to the power of 18. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 18 plus 1, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 18 times 2 to the power of 1. And I have minus 2 to the power of 18 at the end. Now from here, I can go ahead and factor out 2 to the power of 18. So I have 2 to the power of 18 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. Now 2 to the power of 1, that's simply equal to 2. So I have 2 to the power of 18 times 2 minus 1. And 2 minus 1, that's equal to 1. So now I have 2 to the power of 18 times 1. Now 2 to the power of 18 times 1 is simply just 2 to the power of 18. So I'm simply left with 2 to the power of 18. Now, although this is a solution, I'm actually going to find a way to simplify this. So 2 to the power of 18, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 9 times 2. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 9 times 2, that's going to be 2 to the power of 9 to the power of 2. Now 2 to the power of 9, this is equal to 512. So I have 512 to the power of 2. 512, I'm going to rewrite this as 500 plus 12 to the power of 2. Now this is the same thing as 500 plus 12 times 500 plus 12. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by distributing the 500. So now I have 500 times 500 plus 12 times 500. Now if I distribute the 12, I have plus 12 times 500 plus 12 times 12. Now 500 times 500, that's going to be 250,000 plus 12 times 500, that's going to be 6,000, plus again 6,000, plus 144. Now, 6,000 plus 6,000 is 12,000, and 12,000 plus 250,000 is 262,000, plus 144 is 262,144. So this is my answer. All right, guys. So in this equation, I have 2 to the power of m minus 2 to the power of n is equal to 8,064. So I want to find the value of m and n. So because 2 to the power of m minus 2 to the power of n, because this is positive, we know that 2 to the power of m is greater than 2 to the power of n, meaning that m is greater than n, because both of these are the same bases. So I'm going to let m equal to n plus k, and k is an integer. So if m equals n plus k, then I have 2 to the power of n plus k minus 2 to the power of n is equal to 8,064. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of n plus k, that's going to equal 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of k minus 2 to the power of n is equal to 8,064. Now, if I factor out 2 to the power of n, I get 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 8,064. And 8,064, this is simply equal to 128 times 63. So I have 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 128 times 63. Now notice how 2 to the power of n, that's going to be an even number, and 2 to the power of k minus 1, that's going to be an odd number. 
because 2 to the power of k is going to be even, and an even number minus 1 is going to be odd. And 128, this is even, and 63, this is odd. So now, meaning, I can simply set the evens equal to each other, and I can set the odds equal to each other. So 2 to the power of n, this is equal to 128. So let's first go ahead and solve this. If 2 to the power of n is equal to 128, well, 128, that's the same thing as 2 to the power of 7. So I have 2 to the power of n equal to 2 to the power of 7, and this means that n is equal to 7. Now, we have 2 to the power of k minus 1 equals 63. So if 2 to the power of k minus 1, if 2 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 63, then all I have to do is simply add 1 on both sides. These two cancel out, and I'm left with 2 to the power of k is equal to 64. Now 64, that's the same thing as 2 to the power of 6. So I have 2 to the power of k is equal to 2 to the power of 6, meaning k is equal to 6. So now, remember how we said m is equal to n plus k. So in this case, n is 7 and k is 6, so m is equal to 6 plus 7, which is 13. So m is equal to 13, and n is equal to 7. So these are my solutions. All right, so in this problem, I have 100 to the power of 100 over 50 to the power of 50. So 100 is the same thing as 50 plus 50. So I'm going to rewrite this as 100 to the power of 50 plus 50. And I have this over 50 to the power of 50. So now, an important property of exponents is that if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is simply equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So as you see, in this case, I have 100 to the power of 50 plus 50. So 100 to the power of 50 plus 50 this is going to equal a to the power of m, so 100 to the power of 50 times a to the power of n. And n is the same thing as m, so again, 100 to the power of 50. So now I have 100 to the power of 50 times 100 to the power of 50 over 50 to the power of 50. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of, or sorry, over b to the power of m, this is equal to a over b to the power of m. So in this case, I can rewrite this as 100 to the power of 50 times 100 over 100 to the power of 50 over 50 to the power of 50. And now I'm going to rewrite 100 to the power of 50 over 50 to the power of 50 as 100 over 50 to the power of 50. So now 100 divided by 50 is simply 2. So now I have 100 to the power of 50 times 2 to the power of 50. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times b to the power of m, this is simply equal to a times b to the power of m. So in this case, I have 100 to the power of 50 times 2 to the power of 50. We can think of a as 100, b as 2, and m as 50. So this is going to equal 100 times 2 to the power of 50. Well, 100 times 2 is simply 200, so I'm left with 200 to the power of 50. So this is my answer. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation 1 to the power of x is equal to 2. So before we even start solving this, if let's say x is equal to 1, then I have 1 to the power of 1, which is equal to 1. And if x is equal to 2, then I have 1 to the power of 2, which is also equal to 1. And you can go even x 1 to the power of 10 is still equal to 1. 
So you may be thinking, what possible value of x can make 1 to the power of x equal to 2? So let's try solving this. What I'm first going to do is start by taking ln of both sides. So I get ln of 1 to the power of x is equal to ln of 2. And ln is the same thing as the natural log. And the reason I took that ln on both sides is because it comes with a property that states that if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent of b to the front, so this turns into b times ln a. So in this case, I have ln 1 to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So I get x times ln 1 is equal to ln 2. And you may be thinking, we could just divide both sides by ln1, and x would equal ln2 over ln1. However, the only problem with this is that ln1 is equal to 0. And remember, you can't, anything divided by 0 is undefined, so this would be undefined. So, we know that this equation has no real solution, but it could still have imaginary solutions. So to actually solve this, I'm going to use something known as Euler's formula. And basically what this formula is, is if I have something in the form e to the power of i times theta, this is equal to cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta. And I know to many of you watching this video, this may just sound like a bunch of gibberish, but just hang on. So let's say that theta is equal to zero, right? Say that theta equals zero. So now I get e to the power of i times zero is equal to cosine of zero plus i times sine of zero. Cosine of zero is one and sine of zero is zero. So I get this all is equal to one. Now, what if we say theta is equal to two k pi and k is just a substitution for all real numbers. So, so now I get e to the power of i times 2k pi is equal to 1. Because all we did was we just substituted theta in for 2k pi into this same thing. So now, because this is equal to 1, we can sub remember our first equation, which we started with 1 to the power of x equals 2, we can substitute in this for 1, meaning I get e to the power of i times 2k pi to the power of x is equal to 2. So just think of this as 1. So I basically 1 to the power of x equals 2. And now with this, I'm going to take the ln or natural log on both sides. So I have ln e to the power of i times 2k pi to the power of x is equal to 2. So I'm going to now bring this x down using property of natural logarithms. So I get x times ln e to the power of i times 2k pi is equal to 2 sorry, is equal to ln of 2, because I, if you take one, ln on one side, you have to do the other side. And now, I can also move i times 2k pi to the front. So I have i times 2k pi times x times ln e is equal to ln 2. ln e is simply equal to 1. 
So I get x is equal to ln2 over i times 2k pi. And now I'm going to multiply this by i over i. So I get x is equal to negative i times ln2 over 2k pi because i squared is negative 1. So this is my solution.